My name is Khalid Wahid, uh, born and raised in uh, Brooklyn, New York of the USA. Uh, I've been in Amity for maybe about uh, a year and a few months. And give me the long, long story of how, <laughs> you know, what were you like before and then how you eventually became an Ahmadi Muslim. Uh, by the grace of Allah, uh, I was born and raised as a, in a Muslim household. My parents are both, uh, as you would say, Sunni Muslims. Um, uh, growing up, I really didn't care about Islam at all. Uh, up until I accepted Ahmadiyyat, I've never ever read the Holy Quran. Maybe, maybe about Surah Fatiha, but I've never ever read the Holy Quran. I rarely ever prayed. Uh, fasting, you know, you can forget about. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I was about uh, 21 that uh, I started, if you will, I started to incline towards, you know, God. You know, things were weren't going too good in life, so I thought to myself, you know, uh, my best bet would be, you know. Uh, head towards God, or maybe that was Allah pulling me towards Him. Uh, I remember specifically going out trying to find as many books on Islam because Islam, uh, growing up, you know, my parents always told me that Islam was the only truth, you know. But at the same time, I had uh, quite a few doubts about it. Uh, I remember uh, going out finding, uh, you know, different books about Islam. Uh, I picked up the Holy Quran. I've never read it, but I picked up the Holy Quran. I remember uh, specifically going to a library and picking up uh, Islam for Dummies. <laughs> so uh, that was my, uh, my small attempt at, you know, trying to find Allah. And uh, it wasn't until I was uh, a little bit after my 21st birthday, maybe about January, uh, things were going pretty bad. And I remember for the first time in a very, very, very long time, in several years, I remember trying my hardest to, uh, to offer Salat because things were quite bad and remember specifically asking for mercy and Allah answered that prayer in the sense of uh, one day about maybe about a month after that whole episode I, uh, I remember going to pick up some supplies for school uh, at the nearest mall and I remember specifically this urge of really wanting to get home ASAP. I, I don't know why I really wanted to get home, but I had to get home as soon as possible. So I remember leaving the store, picking up all the things that I needed for school, leaving the store and thinking to myself, you know, I should hop on the train. Because usually I would walk, you know, I, I don't mind walking a few miles. So I remember saying, you know, I'm going to hop on the train. No, 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 no. The train's going to take too long. I don't know why I wanted to get home so fast. And then I said, you know, okay. I'm going to hop on the bus. I know where the bus stop is. So I remember walking about two blocks uh, behind, uh, two blocks away, there was a bus stop, but the bus didn't come at all. I'm standing there waiting, and I just, I don't know why I wanted to get home so fast, but I remember, uh, you know, the bus didn't come, so I remember uh, looking for a cab. And I had a few uh, extra dollars in my pocket, so I said, you know, let me take a cab home. So I'm waiting on this cab. I'm waiting on, you know, just to see if a cab passes by. In uh, Brooklyn, New York, we have uh, black cabs, and in Manhattan, there's yellow cabs, but yellow cabs rarely, rarely, rarely come to Brooklyn. And even if, you know, you see one, they won't pick you up at all. So I remember uh, saying to myself, you know, I have to get a black cab. You know, he'll take me home uh, ASAP. A black cab actually came. I'm standing there, I had my finger out, waiting for it. You know, ho hopefully he'll pick me up. And he just passes me right by, as if he didn't even see me. So I noticed a yellow cab coming behind him, and I said to myself, you know, there's, you know, everyone knows you can't get a yellow cab in, you know, Brooklyn. I remember seeing the yellow cab, and you know, dropping my hand, not even thinking about it. The light turns red, and the yellow cab stops. And I don't know why. Something said, you know, try to get that yellow cab. I remember specifically walking all the way up to the cab and knocking on the window, and the driver he stops. And he looks up at me and then says, he rolls down his window, then says, yeah, get in, which was very, very surprising. You don't get picked up by uh, a black cab. And the, uh, the cab driver, you know, I tell him where I live. He says, I don't know where that is. So I said, you know, I'll give you directions, you know, just take me home ASAP. So, uh, you know, we start talking. I don't know. Uh, the conversation started out uh, with the, the hats that we wear. So we started talking about hats. Hats led us to talking about sneakers. Sneakers to, uh, led us to 
uh, clothing and clothing. I don't know how it came up in the conversation, but somebody said, I'm, I'm not sure if it was me or him, but someone said something like, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, slipped and said Alhamdulillah. And the, uh, I think he said Alhamdulillah, and I looked over at him and said, you know, you're a Muslim? He says, well, yes, yes I am. So then we, out of the blue, we just start talking about Islam. You know, the, uh, a 10 minute cab ride turned into a 20 minute cab ride. You know, we get lost, but we're not even upset because we're just sitting there talking as much about Islam as possible. You know, at the time, you know, I said, you know, this is good. You know, somebody's a Muslim, you know, young like myself. Uh, by the way, this is a brother known as uh, Brother Hamza Elias, was my cab driver. So I said to myself, you know, he's a young guy. You know, he seems very, very sincere about Islam and I want to learn, you know. I remember uh, we get up to my house and we're still sitting inside the car, just talking. Two men never met each other a day in our life and it's almost like this like love going back and forth. So I remember uh, we were sitting in the car for one hour. You know, mind you, I don't know why I wanted to get home really, really bad, but at that time I wasn't even thinking about it. We're sitting there, we're talking, 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 we exchange numbers, you know, assalamu alaikum brother, I'm gonna call you and you know, I remember, uh, just to go to show how, you know, uh, beautiful Amity brothers are, I remember trying to pay him for the cab ride and, you know, we get into this whole fight or, uh, you know, oh, no, no, I won't take it and, you know, very, very beautiful brother, alhamdulillah. And uh, I remember um, it was about three or four weeks past, you know, uh, we're constantly talking back and forth, you know, almost every single day for those three weeks. We're calling each other, you know, oh, come on and meet me over here and, you know, we're going to go out to this place and, you know, we hung out, uh, you know, I'm asking him all these questions because I wanted to learn, you know. I'm asking him all these questions about Islam and, you know, the brothers was just so beautiful, you know. And this is, where, this is Ahmadiyyad, you know, when practice, you know, uh, sincerely, you know. So, you know, I was just like absolutely attracted. I remember one day, and this is, this is how I was uh, uh, introduced to Ahmadiyya, because he never ever said that he was an Ahmadi Muslim. And even if he would have, I would have never knew what an Ahmadi Muslim, you know. All I thought was, you know, the Sunni, Shias, and that's it. So I remember one day I came home from school. Uh, at the time, I had a very, very bad habit of uh, smoking cigarettes. And I remember getting home from school. I dropped my bag. I'm looking for my cigarettes. And at the time, my habit was I would go downstairs outside uh, and smoke a cigarette and talk on the phone, you know, call up uh, whether it be, you know, friends, family members, uh, the brother, the brother Hamza. So I remember uh, getting ready to step out. I look over at my mom and, you know, uh, you know, I look over at her, you know, tell her, hi, you know, I'm home. And she looks at me and says, you know, I was just watching the news and they were talking about this, uh, this documentary. On the documentary, they say something to the effect of, uh, you know, they found the tomb of Christ. So, you know, I, I'm, say, I'm standing there like, Astaghfirullah, you know, that's, that's funny, you know, like, you know, Jesus, is, you know, we, you know, we both knew, you know, well, we both believed that Jesus, uh, uh, how you say, like in the fourth heaven. So I said, you know, this is funny, you know, let me call this brother and, you know, tell him, you know, we'll have a good laugh about this. So I remember going downstairs and I called him up and I said, you know, uh, assalamu alaikum. You know, can you believe this? My, my stepmother was telling me about some documentary about they, you know, uh, they think they found the tomb of Christ. You know, can you believe that? And, you know, he never said, you know, he never presented any, any argument. He never uh, said anything, you know, that, that would be considered as, uh, you know, disrespectful or anything. You know, it was very, very logical, very, very beautiful. He said, well, Jesus was a man, right? I said, absolutely. He said he was a prophet of God, right? I said, yes. He said, and we all know that verse in the Holy Quran where it says, uh, all messengers have died before the Holy Prophet. I said, yes. He said, ask me, well, why not Jesus? And you know, it, you know, I didn't ask any more questions after that. It was just like a, a two or three minute silence where I'm sitting there thinking to myself. And I said, that makes such, you know, that, you know, like my heart was so comfortable, you know, it was like that makes so much sense so from then it was like uh well well you know like whatever falsehood is still left in my mind and heart you know uh, what, what about this and you know like destroy all this falsehood that i believe you know